Good evening, folks. My name is Stefan, and I'm going to talk a bit about music for growth and what the role uh, of music can be for, for brands and companies. Uh, so let's kick, kick this thing. Uh, so music plays many different roles for us people uh, and many different roles for companies as well. Uh, I want to mention two different areas uh, tonight. Uh, communication and culture. So for, first and foremost, communication. Uh, music, I would say, is the original form of storytelling. Um, we have actually found musical artifacts, instruments that are 40,000 years old. And if you put that in perspective, we started to read and write just like three, 4,000 years ago. So music is pretty much in our DNA. Um, so music definitely has, has a value for us people and humans. What's the value? So, spoiler alert, but when you ask economists about the value of music, they're probably going to show you something like this. It's around the same amount as the GDP of New Zealand. And that is around 160 billion US dollars. But obviously, music has so many more values to us all. And I want to show you a few of those values. Um, both big and small, uh, music has played a role in, in different parts of society and different uh, parts of history. This one is obviously an example of a bigger scale. Actually, music has played a role in changing society and the way we interact with people. But also, on a lower scale, um, music is changing our lives and music is the soundtrack to a lot of moments in our life. So from falling in love, you probably have a specific song for that specific moment. And you probably also have a, a specific song for this moment when you fall out of love. So again, music is soundtracking our lives um, in both big and small. Um, and culture reflects music. Um, music is fueling media and fueling specifically social media. This is the example of if you aggregate um, followers uh, for both Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, the top five positions of people who are, have the most followers are all musical artists or have a connection to music. So music is really, really fueling the culture all around us. And a more uh, up-to-date example, where actually music can reflect culture and, and events around us, the zeitgeist. A couple of days ago when SpaceX launched their amazing latest rocket, uh, music streaming of David Bowie's old hit Life on Mars peaked. It spiked and had a 300% increase in streams that specific day. So that's an example of how culture and events around us also can fuel music. But today I also want to share how music can um, help brands and companies uh, to drive growth, uh, both in their marketing and also in the way they sell their products. A few examples, but first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about how the brain works and how branding works. So sorry for the, uh, my lousy form of humor here, but branding. Um, what you can see here is uh, basically how purchase decisions are made. Purchase decisions are very emotional and they are very seldom rational. And the way um, successful companies has been using and, and th uh, been thinking about marketing is to build a complex structure of different memories around their brand. So both number of memories, so the quantity of memories we have around a, sp a specific brand or product, but also the quality of those memories we have about that brand or product. 
that matters a lot when we actually are in the purchase, in the point of purchase. So that memory structure helps us to get that um, product out of the shelf when we are in the store, or it helps us to search for the product or the service when we are online. And how do you build that memory structure? Well, you do that by uh, stimulating a lot of different senses we have. Not only our visual senses, but also through sound and through music. So that's why a lot of brands use music in their TV ads, or in the radio ads, or in their online content. And I want to give you a few examples on how brands are using music in their marketing and in their sales. Um, and why do I talk about this right now? Well, mainly because there has been a lot of research recently on this specific uh, topic. Um, things that we were guessing or things we had a gut feel about a couple of years ago, now we can actually prove in research and specific cases. So let's go into the first one. This is an example from one way of experiencing music from a live event. Uh, and a recent study can actually prove that brands who are engaging in live events, such as festivals or concerts and other music events, they can gain from that investment they do um, in different ways. But live events are really engaging the audience. The audience are really forward-leaning and very interested in experiencing the full event around that festival. So if brands are there and are helping the festival attendees with something, or if they make the experience a little bit more fun, they are going to get a good return on that investment both in terms of likability of the brand, but also in the way we consumers recommend that brand to our friends and family. So that's an example from the live event and festival scene. Um, another uh, case I want to show you is how, well, let's see, how recorded music can improve sales. So if the, if the former example was around branding, this example is about sales. How can music drive sales? The example given here is actually a recent Swedish study, and it's the biggest study on this topic ever uh, globally, where, um, where the company ac actually have analyzed their background music they play in their quick service restaurants. Um, and with different types of scenarios of music and different type of programming of music in different restaurants, they have been able to track how sales is influenced by the music they play in their restaurants. And for a big company like this one, an increase of 9% in sales is obviously a fantastic uh, achievement and a great insight. So again, they want to use music even more and they are thinking about background music even harder to uh, increase their sales. And it's great it's because everybody wins. The customer wins because they have a better experience of their visit to this restaurant. The uh, staff wins because they get a better uh, work shift because it's better music, they are you know, happier and feel more motivated. And obviously the shareholders wins as well, because an increase in 9% is pretty good for the shares value. So that's an example from how music can increase sales. But this is an example also, a recent study how you can increase um, productivity and creativity at the workplace with music. Again, this is background music and also the music that people, the individual staff members are listening to at the office. 
So by choosing and programming the right music, you can actually increase productivity and also creativity. And just imagine what that can do with a lot of different companies. Or schools for that matter. Last example on background music. Um, this is a bit more, um, is a, is a more an anecdotal study, but still a nice and interesting case. Um, a wine store recently uh, did an experiment where they played, in different times during the day, they played French music, different times of the day they played German music. And guess what? When German music was played, they sold more German wine. And another fact is that uh, when they played classical music, they sold more expensive wines. So it's very subconscious, this, uh, uh, regarding uh, background music. But it's really interesting to see all the new research and the new insights we get from a lot of companies who are daring to test and, and try this. So I was just want to end off with with this, um, music can help companies and brands in different aspects, in both marketing and in sales, and also in the company culture. So my question is, how can your company press play on music? Thank you. <laughs>